some people it's a bit of tatty stuff. To me, that is gold. That yes. is a sea devil arm. Yeah. There's not many of them, you know? <laughs> made that one yesterday um, and it may not look like much but you've got mysterious planet mind warp set model and mind warp possek and hands there and they're just basically I thought I'm trying to group little items together to help tell the story because what I'm trying to do is a visual episode guide of Doctor Who classic Doctor Who so this is like a mysterious planet mind warp then I've got some costumes from um, Terror of the Vervoid so it's like I want a chronological, it's not just going to be a collection on display, it's going to be a chronological, proper, documented journey through Dr. Bat's farm after. And that's going to be a flight suit of the Leonov from 2010, 2010. And that is a female mannequin that I brutalised because it's for Jan Triska, who's a Russian ballet actor from Russia. Who just his costume is so small it will not fit on any standard human males that I can find. So I've had to just so anyway, this will be the entrance. We'll be coming through here, okay? Uh -huh. This will be blocked off, this will be the exit. This is a Morlock body I'm sculpting because I've got the armor from the, the film and I've got the head, but they all wore muscle suits, which I don't have. So an ex-pupil of mine, a former pupil of mine called Dolly Hope, who left me and I thought, you know, you think people just leave school and just forget about you, came back and contacted and said, I'm a, I'm a sculptor now, would you like any help, Neil? And I went, please, God, yes. So we literally got chunks of wood and we started bandaging it and you know and the idea I went back to the pre-production Morlock because the actors had to wear short arms but when mm. you look at the pre-production ones they're nice they've got big long arms so I thought right okay well the armor will fit on nicely and it just means we get more of an alien like it was intended before they had to sort of stick an actor in it <laughs> so you'll walk through that way I'll take you back around there so we're gonna kind of go so this is actually now what we're this will be this is helpful me yakking on you what you've got here is, this is Ohika's gown. I sold my motorbike for this. <laughs> that to me is one of the most magic items in this collection. Mask of Mandragora helmet. So again, some of the items are just like a little helmet. So that represents Mask of Mandragora. You know, obviously 70s items and 60s items are very scarce. So there's gaps. Yeah. I'll slowly work at it. And then this will be actually the final display, which is, I'm working on the cheetah head now. I'm restoring a cheetah person head upstairs so this is an original cheetah person costume complete and this here is the arctic explorer hemovore um, that's the flapper hemovore's wig it got mixed up in the dressy up basket when we were putting it away at the end and if you look online that was the flapper one and what you had here though was the each i didn't realize but each each hemovore did have a proper name and this was the arctic explorer so it was meant to be sort of around the early 1900s and it's one of the, so it's quite a nice car so i love that and Susan Moore provided me with the, the arm, which is nice. Um, these are not in the original position. We've got Chlorian Guard from Creature, and that's the sort of plaque I'm doing for each one has a nice plaque. So I'm waiting on a hundred plaques. I've written them, designed them, researched them all myself. Um, one's a nylon. Um, a lot of the costumes, for some reason, these are sort of June Hudson's lovely costumes, mm. and they were, for some reason the black faded on some of them. Uh, I initially thought it would be reused in, uh, uh, which one is it, Megalos, mm. with the Dion's and the, um, but it's not, apparently it was just the Incid. Uh, this is from Buck Rogers. Um, I'm gonna put Pete Wallbank's artwork here. This is, facing the wrong way, this is the Graf Vinder Kays costume from, oh, wow. yeah, that, and it was in Anna Karina before. Okay. And, is, and this literally, I would shift it, except it's a two man lift. This weighs so much. It is absolutely ridiculous. Honestly, I'm not yeah. joking. It's the heaviest costume you've got. And there's a Foster from the Keeper of Trucking, yeah. which is a lovely costume, bespoke woolen costume. In here, we've got, I got this from Sue Moore, very kindly got me these hands. And the, now this was the Longleat display. So when you went to see Longleat, basically, this would have been there. Oh. This was the Dragonfire display. I probably took a photograph of it. Actually. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's so well documented, this little, get up and I've actually put pictures from the long exhibition on the display um, obviously the actual mask was a wax and burnt in this studio so it mm -hmm. doesn't, doesn't exist except the skull exists I know somebody's got the skull this is the clown that attacks Ace oh in, wow in um, it's that one there it's the actual I mean it's this is been the most unpleasant costume 
I've had to deal with because its fragility. Okay. Is the plastic's brittle? It's absolutely been a nightmare. It's cracked there as I was doing it. Uh huh. But it's okay, you know, just very carefully. One of the things I do is restore things and just very, very... I want them on show for everybody to see again. Yeah. And I want them looked after so they will live on beyond me. You've got the... This is the Rod Puppet Chimeron. Oh, God, yeah. And it's the... Uh, you can actually see the little rods in it if you look carefully. Um, there was a couple made. This is the actual rod one. Not the one that comes out the egg. That was the one with the goo. It had a tube for goo. It didn't do anything. This is the actual rod one that Delta holds drone mask of happiness patrol so again that's my little piece from the happiness patrol yeah do you know what i mean um tetra hand really really pleased about this this is faith brown's flast head <laughs> sarah green's body oh really yeah so obviously again in the dressy up box they got mixed up okay and, um, but i've got the cyber scout to go with it so I've got the black Cyberman to go with it, which okay. you can see in a minute. So the, in display, when this is put out properly, these will be together. So for the first time on display, the Cyber Scout, which has never been an exhibition that I'm aware of, with with the surviving. And again, I, again, I had to restore this car. I had to. It was on an it was on a weird mannequin, crumpled. Mm. So I had to get a decent mannequin. I've actually snapped the nails off. I put on, I'll, I'll, but I'm, I'm going to put some metal crinkling around the mouth to make it look like more like the original. Anyway, so that's there. Coming around, we're going the reverse way through. By the way, oh, okay. These are the, one of the wall panels I made. It's on the documentary. It's a nightmare, yeah. an absolute nightmare. I don't even want to talk about it. Right, moving on. This is the Dalek we built at school. I built with my kids at middle school. This is going outside. Okay. This is the Dalek enclosure that the classic Dalek will be going in. Okay. Okay. And they're going to have a revelation of the Daleks guard there. So you're going to have a grey, basically a grey Dalek uh -huh. revelation guard there. So you imagine you're actually going the reverse way through. So you'll come around. Uh -huh. Got a nice handy selector Davros to go in here. You're going to have here is going to be Colin Baker. This isn't Colin Baker. This is <laughs> my father-in-law. Um, and basically, we're going to block this off. This is the last section really we're working on. You're going to have Colin Baker here. You're going to have the Garm in the corner, and you're going to have Terraleptils and all sorts right. in there. Okay. So. This is a little dip in here where you're going to have an Earthshock cyber suit and cyber heads. Right. You're going to have season 19 pieces in here like the Terraleptor leader mask. You're going to have uh, Minusin gone bits, uh, sorts of bits. Paul Darrow's costume randomly put in there, that's off Time Lash. This will be the Tom Baker here, that's actually, that's the dinosaur in a jar from the Pirani's TARDIS. Oh wow. It's lovely isn't it? Yeah, absolutely fab that, I love it. And that's Nabil Shaban's actual mask from Varus. That's the one from Varus. And to make it better, I've got Martin Jarvis's governor costume. So that will be displayed with Martin Jarvis's governor costume. So I've got the cyber scout and the yeah. cry on, and Sil's head, and, um, you know, vampire guard from a bit of a Gundam. State of Decay. Yeah, State of Decay. And you've got Farrell. See, the, you know, from Warriors Gate, I've yeah, got yeah. Cufflink, Garden, that's a bit of original Gundam. And these are and and Andrew Scaletta's book illustrations to go with it. Okay. Pirate Planet Guard. Yeah. And again, um, Andrew's artwork. Um, I'm kind of going backwards now. And there's not everything's out yet, but again, this is the season um, 15 display. I've got a shield gun crystal from um, Underworld to go on there. Sunmakers. Asian of time again, lovely book, published book work. Um, this is probably the nicest piece in the museum for me, and it is a Galset gun from, it's not yet, it's upstairs, it's the Galset gun, surviving Galset gun from the Santaran experiment. The Santaran experiment is my favourite Doctor Who story, I, right. I love it. And I've also got a Santar um, model I sculpted of Staya. A few John Pertwee bits, surviving sea devil arm, Exelon head, Salomian helmet, and Axon tentacle, like you do. I mean, they're some Axon tentacle. Yeah, Axon <laughs> tentacle. It's actually off that costume. The guy who, you know, Mick Hall, famous collector, who, who okay. owned the whole costume, so, you know, that fell off and he gave it to me. Which was okay. Really that, but that, that, to me, was like, to some people, it's a bit of tatty stuff. To me, that is gold. That yes. is a sea devil arm. Yeah. There's not many of them, you know? <laughs> so was that. That was in the Longleat and... Um, that was done all the major exhibitions, yeah. that. Yeah. 
And uh, right, moving on here. So I'll just take it down this way first. So that Dalek is going in there. So and that painting's moving over there as well. What you, this is this is the bit. If you imagine you've come in the front, you'll now be coming around here. So I've still got the setup from Netflix. Now this is my restored Terralept. Mm -hmm. It's done these a little bit now. I sculpted all this back in. That was the head that came with the lot. That's the actual Michael Melia's animatronic mask. Okay. And I've sculpted in. There was nothing really there, so I've sculpted that back in. I will probably repaint that in. And then this stuff here, I had to make two new arms for the costume, so the legs and everything, the till, and I sculpted all around. Got Adric's boot, gun from an shock, a couple of cyber helmets. And this is, again, one of the, I think, I mean, for me, that's one of the highlights of the museum. I think this is as well. These two pieces here, I've got the original Cyber Scout, and that is the only black Cyberman there is. And, um, well, for the night time being, and that's Martin Jarvis's costume, and that'll go with Sill. So I'm really chuffed with those because they're going to make, I think, nice displays. Because you know? mm. to put two characters together from, you know. Um, that top there's the garm just picking over there. I'm yes, restoring the garm. I'm restoring the garm. <laughs> you see how he's got no arms? That's because the guy who got him from Bonhams yeah. had actually not, um, he, he left it in a prefab. You know, industrial state in the broad sunlight, yeah. and the arms just deteriorate. So, I've got the bits of rubber I could, and I've re sculpted two new arms which are going to go on. And I've got the head, and obviously, I'm moving the head off because it's going to go right up to the goes right up to the top. And, and you've got prisoner, uh, sorry, Paradise Towers uh, caretaker. That was a for an unmade film that was a, a redesign of an ice warrior which was made for a film called Ragnarok that wasn't ultimately filmed. Well, it's got to production, it was in the 90s, you know, and they were doing yeah, spin-offs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was now, I've got, the, I've got the warrior as well. Okay. It, they, I thought they were really nice, to be honest. Phil yeah. Robinson made uh, Hyperion 3. Oh, yeah. Um, and Hyperion, oh, Megalos, Karis, Jacket, yeah. Leisure Hive, pair of the gloves off. You see, I quite like little items because I think they help tell the story. So it's like, you know, like that book, um, A History of the World Through 100 Objects. Yeah. It's like Doctor Who through, you know, 100. And this is going to be the start of the museum, which is going to be down here. That's a 1960s original pull from the George Palmore lock. Yeah. That's a Rudy Mencina 1970s Marvel Classics First Men in the Moon page. This is the HG well, you know, start with HG. That's my illustration of the original. Did they reprint that in Doctor Who Weekly? Yes, they absolutely did. Yeah. This is my illustration of a Morlock, which I'm selling as postcard, and that's Andrew Skeletta from the Monsters book. Um, original painting for there. So I'm going to start with HG Wells and then mm. a big Morlock costume will be with it, which mm. would be nice. And then we go, then we go into like space heroes with Book Rogers and things, pulps. And yeah. I've got like a costume from Dune, so I'll do. What I'm going to do is link, instead of doing it um, chronologically in terms of films, I'm doing it more actually when the book was, so if the book was published, you know, 60s, I'll put the costume, whatever age the costume is from, I'll put that with the book. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So that's yeah. historically how I'm going to try and do it. So if, if you will, like this is Judge Dread, bits and pieces from the film Dread, not Judge Dread. Dread. And this is an original 1970 Beneath the Planet of the Apes gorilla costume. Yeah. And my former pupil, who is now a sculptor, she did the mask for me for a final degree project. I could have sculpted it myself, but as you can see, I've got quite a lot on. And so when she said, I need to do something, have you got anything I could do? I went, do you fancy doing a thing each? With, you know, Dick Chambers mask job. And she said, I've never heard of him. I said, you need to see the mask from Planet of the Apes. If you're doing prosthetics, you need to see it. So she did that. Right. And it's brilliant. So that's an original costume with a nice bespoke head. Engineer, screen used off Prometheus, which is pretty oh, okay. cool. Yeah, these are bits off Alien. Various odds and sods, um, which again, Nice to have now, just what I'll do. Sorry about this, this garlic is in here. Now come the last space here. Then, uh, come in here. Oh, okay. And then go up. This will be continuing history, so just watch your head. It's your sci fi section continues. How, how big is this? How many square meters is oh, it? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. And you've got this is the Thunderbird 2 flight chair. Oh, right, yeah. And the flight suit to go with it. And then this right. down here, these are all pieces of Marvel. From the Jonathan Frakes film, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. rubbish yeah. film, but good yeah. props. And these are all Marvel pieces, and that's like the thin mask that I re sculpted the big eyes in and everything. Yeah. And these are sort of more recent films, sort of recent sci fi. Mm. Um, so you've got like um, you know, Babylon 5 pieces, 
Uh, Ender's Game, Defiance, Edge of Tomorrow, Surrogate, uh, and this is Falling Skies. I've got more stuff to come in here. That's Spectrum, which was on Netflix. And these bits in here are actually off Star Wars. Which we'll get a display light in there, actually. Star Trek pieces are so rare. And, yeah. ex and it, it's sorry, it's the expense. They cost just one, one fees, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah crazy on me so I, I can't afford very much from Star Wars but I've got a few little bits so at least I can do you know what I mean get there, yeah, yeah. Get there. Um, and that's Morgo Space Precinct remember Space Precinct I never watched it <laughs> right no well, it was yeah it was quite good um, that was Space Precinct uh, that's Chris Hemsworth Thorcos of the Avengers um, really yeah yeah uh, that's my sister's Fantasy male. <laughs> yeah, that's basically he, he wore like a waistcoat and then there was a fix to the waistcoat and there were bits and there was gold okay. and straight off the costume. Um, that's the most expensive thing I've bought for the museum ever. Okay. So it's not my favourite piece by any way. I mean, I love the thing. I love the Doctor Who stuff primarily. But this was a hero mask, so to not stress the rubber, uh -huh. I basically sculpted those eyes in. And this is where. What's the hero mask? Basically, it's multi prosthetic, so it's like um, it's got like the lips separate, the nose separate, the eyebrows are separate, everything separate, so the actor can emote. Mm. There's a quite a few of these out there, but a lot of them are stunt ones that the stuntman would just pull a mask over. Okay. So the problem is to not make it wear and stretch over time. Mm. I didn't want to stretch and pull on the rubber, so that meant I had huge eye holes. So I thought I have to sculpt in to sort of mm. make up, but it means it's going to last. It's not going to. It's not going to because the problem is. A lot of these are so, it's the, it's foam rubbers and latexes and they deteriorate, so you want to seal them and stop them, um, you know, uh, what's the word, you know, d just deteriorating all the time, mm. you know, yeah. perish naturally. So that's why he's shiny, he's not finished, but he's, I'm sealing him in, so that, and then I'll put like different rat sprays on, just to protect them so the last, uh, hopefully a very long time, yeah. you know. Certain pieces I've had for like 15 years that I've done that to have not had any deterioration now, you know. But when they, the, the, the props were in sort of um, long lead places, they were um, subject to such, they just nobody looked after them. So a lot of the damage yeah. is from then, you know, it's not so... Um, I'm just going to push this down here. Perhaps this is a bit the TV with a fly back in. Sorry. So is that the tour? That's the tour! Yeah. The original storyboards made by John Black for the Space Pirates. Wow! Exactly. Now the thing that, these are like... like now you have to be really geeky to say wow to something like that, yeah, but, but see, it is. But you get it, you see. I get it, yeah. See, and this is why, this is the sort of piece for you and me. Yeah. The kids who come, the families who come will be just like, what the hell is that? Yeah. Screw. This is not, these are the, but for me, that's like, that was on set in 1969. Yeah. You know, that's like a wow for yeah. me. Yeah. So I had to get it displayed. Obviously, I didn't want to take up too much wall space, so I sort of had it. But they're transparent, so that. But that that's like a special piece for me. It's just you know, it, it's all relative sci-fi, isn't it? Yeah. It's like you know, um, I mean, another of my favourite piece here is, is it this one. Yeah, again, most people won't get this. Mm. That is an original 1963 black and white The Outer Limits script. Mm. And that, I love The Outer Limits. That's my yeah. second favourite, the black and whites. <laughs> and that's one of the original scripts. I just think, it's not much to look at, but to me, that's gold. Yeah. You know? 